Hello, everybody. Welcome back to a very special edition of the Canadian Premier League newsroom presented by Volkswagen, where we're going to be joined for the first time as a Halifax Wanderer by a man that if, if you've been watching Canadian soccer for the last 10 years, you know him. I don't think he needs a ton of introduction, but the newest member of the Halifax Wanderers, Daniil Henry, is going to come into the newsroom here. Uh, Daniil, you're you're at Pearson right now, just about to fly out to Halifax. Um, how you doing, man? Just just tell me where you're at at the moment. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to get to Halifax so I can take my first breath of fresh air. Um, I'm excited. Um, I've been home now for the better part of a month. I'm waiting for the birth of my child. Um, uh, my son's two weeks old now, so I felt like for now and for everything that's going on and what's been going on in the last few weeks, it's it's nice to be home for a bit. Um, and to be going to Halifax, um, playing under Patrice, um, I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. I mean, congratulations on the birth of, of your child. We, we didn't know about that. So that's always a special moment. I'm sure it's been a busy couple of weeks for you then. Uh, tell us a bit about, you know, choosing to, to sign not only in the CPL, but in Halifax specifically, and maybe just how quickly this this opportunity came around. Uh, it's been going around. Uh, honestly, uh, me going to Halifax is more because um, Patrice has been so persistent. He's been someone who's always been asking how I'm doing. Um, a lot of his ex-players um, told me amazing things about him. So it really made this opportunity for me possible. So um, definitely him just checking in, seeing how my son's doing, how my family doing, how I'm doing mentally, physically. And I said, you know what? It's the type of guy I want to play for. Um, I buy into everything that he's doing there. And I watched a few games and um, so the style of football that they play in Halifax, it doesn't it doesn't show in the standings. So I'm I'm looking to to help as much as I can. Um, it's a very young team. Um, I'm sure I can drop germs and, and and help the the group grow and come together. For sure, you mentioned Patrice a couple times there, and and as you mentioned, you know he's coached so many guys that you've played with at the national team. You know Kamal, Alistair, Dane Sinclair, guys like that. Um, how? familiar were you with him before how how did you know him and did you kind of reach out to some of those guys as well just to get a little bit of a, a sense of what he's like as a coach um i think um the boys did tell me about him but, um, i didn't know much about him but i but when i started doing my own homework i know how influential he is especially within the one program and and how influential he was for kamal and dane um and ali um to know that those are the boys that he had and the the level that they play at now and continue to flourish at the national team level it's a testament to his graft and his desire to be a coach to, to help these young players so no definitely when i think about um patrice and, and what he's done in football it's not something that's came overnight you know he's been doing it for a long time he certainly has and now i think we're starting to see you know, we're starting to see at the professional level a little bit of, of why players have liked playing him for so 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 long at a thing like the League One level in Vaughn and whatnot. But you know, Daniil, you come into the CPL, which is full of young players in Halifax, especially in that back line, that defensive group. Yourself as a guy who's played all over the world, you know, three different continents, been on the national team for a very long time. You feel like you, you have a lot to bring to a young group like that in, in you know in the domestic league that you can really be a leader in that locker room yeah um i i feel like once i get fit um a few games whatever it is i know that i can motivate i, I know that i can to bring energy to locker rooms to defensive like i'm um, getting clean sheets knowing how to close out games um but i feel like i'm best leading um when i'm doing it um i hate to talk i hate to speak um, because when you speak too much, it, it loses value. Um, it doesn't hit the same. So if they see it, I talk about what I'm preaching on a daily basis, um, through examples, um, that's the way that the majority of my teams have respected me and, and who I am to this day. Yeah, you talk about you know that, that kind of respect and, and those experiences you have in the game that you bring into this locker room. I mean, you've, you've been there, you've won big games, especially in the last couple of years with Canada. Mm -hmm. I think everybody in this country has seen that. Uh, and you and a lot of your teammates there have spoken about that sort of brotherhood that you guys created in that locker room, that national team. Is that sort of experience, that kind of culture, something that maybe you can bring as an example to Halifax, to that young group? 
Absolutely. What John did for our national team uh, that four-year cycle to bring us to a World Cup, um, it, it was it was something that was so far away. Thinking about going to a World Cup and how important it was to get to the 2022 World Cup and not wait for four years to pass to get to the one that we were we're basically hosting. Um, it meant more. Um, how we are portrayed and always choking in the big games and getting close and giving the the um, our nation hope and then crumbling. Um, to be a great team, everybody has to buy in. It's that simple. Um, something to believe in, something something that, that really triggers us as players to want to win and to go that extra, extra bit. Um, and that's what it takes. It takes that extra bit, more effort, training, um, the video. Um, and then, you know, you want to believe in someone that a coach you wanna you wanna you wanna make sure it's someone that is trustworthy, someone that really is right there in the fight with you. You know what I mean? A player, a coach that really um, sees all of it in his players, knows how to manage all of his players. And um, I think that Halifax, we have an opportunity to to definitely um, turn the second part of the season around. I feel like they have unbelievable young players in the team, um, and now it just comes down to how do we finish winning games. Um, how can we be now ruthless? How can we uh, be organized? Um, because in those transition moments is when we usually are vulnerable. Mm -hmm. the, the word ruthless is a good one. I think we've seen, you know, a lot, plenty of plenty of moments uh, with that. You know, with with not only with Halifax but yourself at the national team level. There's some some pretty great moments from that qualification cycle. I'm thinking, you know, you know, standing your ground against Panama and, and running into Chucky Lozano in Edmonton. Um, but I, I just want to ask one more about you know the national team and what it's meant to you because I think a lot of people, including ourselves and obviously yourself, were disappointed when you got that injury before the World Cup, right? But I think it says a lot about you as a teammate and as a guy that you kind of chose to to step aside and to let someone else have that opportunity. Just tell me about you know still being part of that that group and obviously it says a lot about how important you are to that group that. You still went to Qatar with them, but what was that experience like for you? Uh, it's probably the, I can get emotional right now thinking about it. It's, it was probably one of the hardest days of my life because it's like, I want you to put you into like the in kind of the mood or the feel of what I, imagine building something from the ground up, seeing it happen, finally believing it, days away, and then it's taken from you. You know what I mean? Um, I'm so thankful for the nation and John for understanding um, maybe my role. Um, wasn't a starter, but like I said, everybody understood their role, but everybody had games and everybody felt important. And everybody understand they had a service to um, for the nation while they get to put on the shirt. So um, being a part of that group, knowing that I felt that there was someone who was way better than me in a better position to make sure they felt the roster spot. Um, I would do that because that's that's what we instilled in this team from day one, um, leaving it in a better place. We talk about the shirt and what it means to us. And I knew that I wouldn't be fit enough to, to go out there <laughs> and play against the likes of moderates and go against a strong Belgian team. Like This is the reality. I'm not... <laughs> I'm a realist. I'm not going to sit here and be an, an optimistic person who feels like, yeah, I'll be back. Like, no, like I'm not going to go on the world stage and get my ass torn when I knew that I was not in the right capacity to, to give Canada my best. So um, I can sit back and I can enjoy the moments and know that um, I did what was right. Absolutely. I mean, as I said, it, it says a lot about you as a teammate and how important you were to that group that, you know, that, that was kind of a choice you made and how much, your teammates kind of respected that. Um, you know, just lastly on, on that, uh, once you get to Halifax and you're playing games again, you know, playing consistent minutes, do you feel like there's, you know, more of your story to be written with the national team? Is that something that's still kind of a goal for you to get back into that into that group? Yeah. Um, it's crazy. To be honest, it's like um, I've had some unlucky times since I left Korea where I was on my top yeah. game. Um, but I don't know what it is, but every single time someone gets on the phone, it's positive until they talk to whoever they talk to, and then it's don't touch the needle or whatever. I don't know, but I have something to prove. Say it like that. I have something to prove. I have 
you fire me, I have my why. And it's not about me, it's going to be in a team atmosphere. But yeah, I'm definitely going with my mind knowing that, yeah, I'm definitely going to show people that I have so much left to give. So yeah, when you see me out there, you're going to see the same passion and the same fire because I can't give you less than that. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm sure that, that the fans in Halifax are going to be are going to be thrilled to be hearing that because I, I'm sure you've seen a, a few highlights and stuff, but it can get pretty crazy at the Wanderers grounds when they have some of those special nights. I'm I'm sure just to finish this off here, I'm sure you're excited to go be a part of that soon. I'm, def- I'm deadly serious when I say I'm going to give Halifax everything because I have a coach that is behind me and so she has the same vision that I want. And yeah, I owe it to myself and to my family more to myself than anything that yeah, I'm not going to be counted down or counted out from none of this stuff yet. Like, uh, I have so much more to give. Absolutely. Well, Daniil, we don't want to stand in the way of you getting to Halifax on time. Uh, we'll, we'll let you run to make sure you catch this flight. And I'm sure, uh, I'm sure everybody there is going to be just so excited to have a player of your experience and your quality in not just in Halifax, but in the Canadian Premier League as a whole. So, you know, thanks so much for taking a couple of minutes to do this and welcome to the CPL. Thank you. I'm excited.